I left the show to take the job at CBS because they were starting Playhouse 90. And the man who what I had worked for, Peter Kortner, who was, who was my immediate superior at Matinee Theater, next to Al McCleary, had gone to CBS some months before and was involved in the planning of, of Playhouse 90, which was called Project X at the time. And Peter called me and said, listen, come on over here and, and get interviewed for, because there's a story editing job. And I said, well, listen, this is, this is kind of difficult over here. It's really rough, but I hate to just walk away. You know, I've got friends here and so on. So I went over and had an interview and, uh, with Martin Manulis, who was going to produce it. And he talked to me about it and everything. He asked me about myself, and it was a very good interview. And I went back to work at uh, Matinee Theater, and I told Al McCleary. I said, Peter Kortner went over there, and he called me in, and McCleary said, he, he blew up, you know. How can you be so disloyal? And I said, no, I just wanted to let you know I was talking to him. And he didn't really mean that, but I mean, that was his hair trigger temper. And then a few weeks later, I got another call, please come back for a second interview. So I went back and I met one or two executives, plus and, and Martin again. And uh, Peter Kortner was in the office, so we had a long talk, and uh, they hired me on the spot. And so I started right away. I, I left Matinee Theater and started right away. And it was uh, getting, that, getting that show going. And um, it was actually, actually they had, they had really developed and started um, the great script, Requiem for a Heavyweight, before I got there. And um, Forbidden Area, which was based on a novel by Pat Frank, but, but Rod Serling had, had written that too, written the screenplay. They had developed those before I got there. So uh, when I got there, um, I was able to bask in the glory of those successes. <laughs> I had nothing to do with them. Can you talk a little bit about interview, interviewed with Manulis? First of all, he asked me the, the question that usually when you're, when you're dealing with, with story editing jobs, um, he asked me about my feeling for literature, for short stories, novels, plays, and so on, which would be the substance, the content of Playhouse 90. Playhouse 90 was an extraordinary experiment. First of all, 90 minutes, uh, and dramatic shows regularly, weekly, were one hour. So this was a show that couldn't possibly succeed. I mean, there was a lot of negativity about it in the industry because it just, it just couldn't hold people for 90 minutes. In addition to that, CBS was scheduling it right after a one-hour show called Climax. So Thursday night was all drama, couldn't work. People couldn't handle all that. The interview for me was about what is my attitude about certain literary material? What do I think about uh, stories that might be done on, play, on Playhouse 90? Hubble Robinson, the, the head of CBS, was dead set against costume drama. Didn't want any of for cost, for audience appeal, whatever. Didn't want it. So I couldn't talk about the great classics and doing them. I had to talk about contemporary material. And I talked about the great short stories that I was familiar with, Scott Fitzgerald, of course, um, and um, many of the people functioning in those days that, uh, that, that I was reading, the, the, the great stories that the Saturday Evening Post used to publish, Harper's would publish, uh, and the fact that I'd hoped that we, the CBS, could be competitive in, in, in buying the rights to those stories. And, uh, I told him, I said, I'm not, I told Manuel, I said, I'm not a, uh, a negotiator for price. And he said, don't worry about that. We have a business affairs office. So that relieved me of that. I, I never really actively negotiated. And I said, I'm, I think I'm particularly, I have a good eye for, uh, for original material. And I said, I'm particularly conscious of structure. And I said, you're, you're doing 90 minutes. And I said, I think you have to have a lot of subplotting. You can't just do a, the one-hour shows, the great one-hour shows, Studio One, Philco particularly, were superb, intimate, one-hour tales, uh, beautifully done. And they, 
they were restrained in the sense that they held tight to just a few characters and a few settings. And I offered the opinion that with 90 minutes, you've got to open that up and you have to have a subplot. You have to have other characters in it. So then he gave me the bad news, which he had received, which was, there will be nine acts in the 90 minutes, which means a lot of commercial interruptions. So we talked about the fact that there have to be false climaxes, false act endings. Somebody has to die. Somebody has to be threatened. Uh, somebody has to have a terrible disease. Uh, somebody has run off to get married. There have to be climaxes which are false because everything is, is a three-act structure. Everything is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Even Broadway, which has one intermission now, that first their first act is their first act, and the second act is act two and act three. I mean, you have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. 